Okay, uh, so really I just wanted to look at the column today, right, for UV unwrapping. Now the biggest thing about the column is, believe it or not, since we did this with a curve and the screw modifier, we don't really have to worry about UVs that much, right? It's kind of one of the benefits uh, to a certain extent of uh, UV unwrapping, right, with those things. Um, so if I go to the uh, workspace UV editing, right, um, and then I kind of maybe zoom in here a little bit and, you know, three for face mode. Control A for select all, right? Remember, select all. Right, if we go to select menu, select all. You can actually see it's got UVs already kind of laid out here. They're a little large, a little long, but they're basically the shape we want. Now, of course, remember, one of the things that you want to make sure of is that you have um, your material set up on this stuff properly and that there's a UV grid texture plugged in. So that'll be some great little practice for this. So I'm going to go back to 4 for object mode, right? Make sure the column object selected. Remember, there is in our properties menu right here, right, this little red, kind of red salmonish color, uh, which salmon is kind of a pinkish reddish color, um, kind of salmon, maybe a light salmon red, right? But down towards the bottom, there's this kind of two reddish colored checkerboard, and then one that's like a ball with it looks like a small uh, bit of a checkerboard in it. That's your material, right? That's for textures or loading in images. That's for your um, material itself right? So when you click on that little red ball, you'll see that there's materials up here. We can create a new one, but next to that, remember, is a ball again, right? We can kind of see that white ball. Uh, it actually looks just like the red one down here, but it's white, and it also looks a lot like the material preview, right? So there's kind of, they usually are related to each other in terms of uh, material stuff, right? So whenever you see kind of a checkerboard ball in Blender, that's usually referencing material stuff. So if I click on that little ball, you'll see there's already that default material that's on everything. So I just can kind of highlight that to make sure that's the default material on this. And then you'll see it brings up all of the material controls. Now, we're going to see some of these later on, right? There's a lot of properties we can adjust in here. For us right now, though, I just want to plug in a UV grid to see how my distortion looks, right? So what you do is you go to base color, right? And believe it or not, you can pick colors. But you'll notice there's dots, right? These dots here. Uh, most of them are gray. Occasionally you'll see a purple or a yellow one. But these little dots kind of in the front of the, uh, right next to the name actually, base colors, yellow dots. If I click on that yellow dot, right, left click. And usually when I say click without specifying left or right, I mean left click. I'll usually be very specific and mention right click, right? But left click is kind of our default interaction, right? We left click to select stuff. We left click to grab our manipulators, right? It's uh, We left click to grab the handles for our tools. So left click is actually kind of our primary interaction mouse button, right, that left mouse button. So when I click on that yellow dot, it brings these up. And one of them is image texture. So we move our cursor over to image texture, pick it, and there we go. Now we see we've got the ability to open a texture, so there's an actual image texture plugged in here. We have the ability to open one that already exists outside of Blender, but we also have the ability to create a new one. So I can click on New, and I'll call this uh, UV just to give it a name, so it's got a name there, right? Let's call it UV. But I also want to go down to the Generated Type area. It's kind of towards the bottom. It'll say Blank, and it's got like a little pull-down menu, right? A little tr uh, V. So if I left-click on that, what I could do is I could pick UV Grid, right? We want that Generated Type to be UV Grid instead of Blank. I then hit OK, and particularly if I turn on Material Preview, right, because remember there's wireframe right here, the white solid ball is shaded, and then there's the white checker ball, the checkerboard one that looks a lot like the material stuff. That's your Material Preview. Uh, by default, it uses Eevee, which is uh, Blender's real-time rendering engine, and it's quite good. Uh, Eevee is quite nice. So now we can see that the UVs on this aren't horrible. They're a little squashed, but we see that's still looking pretty checkerboard, right? So if I go to 3 for face mode, remember, and then uh, maybe select all, or in this case it's already selected all, but remember, select all, you'll notice that we can see the UVs here, and they're just large. Now remember, we could go to object mode in here to select the whole island. Right? Remember, they have selected types right here, vertex, edge, face, object. Object, though, kind of works for islands in the UV editor. And I can just hit R for scale. 
and I can grab on the green handle to scale it down. You see how it actually becomes less stretched out? I get a W for move, bring this down a little bit. Probably maybe a little more R for scale. Maybe a little bit there. You can always stretch it out a little bit in the red axis too. But you see how now it's actually getting to the point where we've got pretty low distortion, right? There's maybe a little bit of stretching there. But this will still work quite well for what we want, right? I don't want to try to overload you with too many tools for doing stuff, right? Um, but, you know, it's kind of one of those things we have that we could do. Um, if you go to UV menu, right, there's kind of features like minimize stretch that can kind of help the distortion a little bit. But it kind of also distorts it a little bit, so I'm, I've never been that big a fan of it. Um, you can try some align features if you want to. Um, I've found that they're a bit hit or miss, kind of the default ones. Um, I don't really want to worry too much about ours getting too uh, nuts because this will still work quite well for us, right? Remember, it's much more about having low distortion than zero distortion. And you see that there's very little distortion there, right? We're just getting a little bit of minor, minor stretching here. But that can be one of those things where you can you know, play around some of the edge loops, uh, kind of do some features of the line. But uh, for us, this is actually going to work pretty well. Now, if you did want to, right, you can, of course, go to UV. Um, and in the unwrap section, you'll see there is the ability to do what's called a cylindrical projection, right? A cylindrical projection. And that actually can do something with the cylinder. In this case, it's kind of really distorted. But you can actually go to the cylinder projection options box down here, right? And what you could do is you could actually go to uh, direction and align to object. And then you still have to do a pretty good job of aligning the UV's to object. The only thing you have to worry about is maybe up here it's a little off, right? Uh, you can also have it scale down to the UV area, right? Some of those checkboxes there. And you can play around with some of these other features, which I, I found, you know, nah, don't really help hurt it that too much. The only thing you have to worry about is these little guys on the ends. But you can always rip these off and sew them back on there if you need to. Uh, for us, though, we already felt it was working pretty well without having to worry about that. I just wanted to make sure that you know that there is the ability to do cylinder-shaped projections. But since we were using screw modifier, the UVs were already actually in there reasonably good, right? Reasonably good. Um, and I just wanted to make the cylinder pretty easy for us. Uh, the screw modifier already builds reasonably good, if not perfect UVs in there. Um, so we're, you know, pretty good shape there for now. Um, don't really want to worry about showing you any other features that, uh, you know, you guys might not have them on yours. I have some add-ons installed on here. <laughs> um, so that should work pretty well for us, right? We have a, a minor bit of stretching in some of these areas, but... Nothing too egregious for the texturing we're going to do. I just want to make sure that you guys can kind of see that that's got that. You see it's more stretched out up here, right? But we're not even going to see those tops and bottoms, so we're not going to sweat that. All right. But really just kind of wanted to get you to see that a lot of your UVs from the screw modifier are in reasonably good shape. And that uh, you can do cylindrical projection, right? Not meant to be exhausted with everything you can do. I personally would actually do an unwrap and then use um, text tools uh, rectify, uh, and I feel like that would work better. But I want to save that for our spaceship project later on, right? So on this one, good enough will be good enough, right? Uh, I just don't want to go through finding add-ons for you for this project. Uh, so um, that'll be something we'll look on on our second project uh, for the second half of our term, right? Uh, but this will be good enough for what we want to do here. And it's, like I said, this lets me highlight the fact that the screw modifier builds in fairly good UVs, and if not perfect, reasonably good ones that'll work well for us, well enough anyways. And that we have cylindrical projection. And that's kind of one of the things I wanted to make sure you guys got to see with that. Uh, so I'll save that, and that'll be in good shape for there. And now what I want to do is I want to go to File, Open. And I want to open the room up, because I want to show off a few other things for the room itself. Um, so I did want to spend time, really, with today's lecture focusing on non-unwrapping methods, right? Unwrap is powerful. It's the way you're going to do, quite frankly, the majority of your unwrapping. But it's good to know that you have some other projection types that 
particularly when you do stuff with curves, you might already have pretty good UVs to start from anyways, right? Um, so we now go to our room, right? And what we want to do with the room itself, we'll just kind of focus on the base room itself, is of course uh, we'll go to UV editing workspace, right? There we go. And what we'll do is we'll, of course, go to our uh, red sphere, right? Right down here, properties menu, right? Red sphere, just like we did before. Make sure to go to the little white sphere right here. And in this case, you'll actually see that we're not actually seeing any material on there. So if you need to, you can always just click new, and it will make that new material for you also, right? So if for whatever reason there is no material in there, uh, just click on the new button, and it will make this material for you. You can give it a name. Right, so you can easily name these, right? Just right there. So I can easily just call this room. There we go. And of course, there's the base color, yellow dot. We left click on that. And we've seen this a couple times now, right? A few times in our other videos. Uh, particularly when we did the start of the table, the start of the chair, right? So today we're getting to see it in this video twice, right? Image texture. If you have text tools, it actually has like a little preview that can kind of speed up that process just a little bit, um, which is kind of good. But um, for us, it's great to see some of these things default without add-ons also. So of course, that creates this little area. I want new. Call this uh, UV. Go to generated type, right? Down here, UV grid. It's all white. It's in this little kind of menu that's here, right? And there's an area called generated type. It uses blank, switch to UV grid. And of course, you can make the resolution higher if you want to see a smaller checkerboard. There we go. And of course, remember, there's wireframe ball up here, the white solid ball right here, and then there's material preview. And in this case, you can kind of see how the UV is kind of all over the place on this one. And so we really, really will probably need to do a much better job of UV unwrapping this, right? Now, here's one of the things I really wanted to show you with this one, right? Three for face mode, control A for select all. If it's, select, if, if it's not already selected, usually if you're in object mode and you hit three, everything will be selected. But remember, if not, select, select all, control A is the click key for that. And in the UV menu, right? Remember, there is that UV menu when you're in UV editing workspace. In the unwrap section, of course we have unwrap. If we really want to set up seams, we can unwrap it. But you see there's a couple of options in here, right? We have cube projection, which will actually project these kind of all as, as basically as a cube, so it does a pretty good job of um, uh, kind of creating a box around it, if you will. And you saw that, that actually in itself does a pretty good job of UV wrapping for us. Now you will see that there's a lot of overlap on top. The other thing we might try is unwrap smart UV project. And this gives you a little more control over, like, space between the islands, the angle limit for unwrapping. And I tend to like Smart UV Project a little more because it automatically packs everything for us. It's got a little bit of that cool angle control. But technically, Cube Map will work fairly decently also. But basically, what Smart UV Project does is it's kind of a variation on Cube Map. It's, it's basically kind of like it's setting up a... a uh, a plane to project from the top, bottom, left, right, front, back. So you're kind of just projecting like a, a screen, like a flat square screen. But because Smart Project has the angle control, there it actually has an angle threshold for polygons that can be part of those projections. Uh, so I tend to like Smart Project as kind of a, a, a fairly cool um, automatic unwrap. So there are a couple of other projection types, cylinders, cubes, spheres, which basically do projections like a cylinder shape or a spherical shape or a cube shape, right? And then there is Smart UV pro uh, Project, um, which I is pretty good about kind of doing its own little automatic mapping. Um, that won't really fly, per se, as much for some of our other stuff where we want to have fewer islands. One other thing about Smart UV Project is it gives you a projection that's pretty low distortion and it does it r super quick, but it does tend to create a lot of islands. And even though 3D Projection Painting is quite good at ignoring seams, um, 
we're in the habit of not still not wanting to have any more schemes that are absolutely necessary. So really you should be relying much more in most instances on unwrap, right? Set the schemes, unwrap, and you're good. But, you know, if it's a building, if it's a desk, you might find like cube projection or smart UV project does a pretty good job of getting that for you pretty quickly. And you can see here it's well packed. And you can see if I go to four for object mode, there's a bunch of little islands, right? So we can see, you know, it does a, does a pretty good job of kind of unwrapping those bad boys for us. Those little chunks. Uh, sometimes, though, I find it does kind of make them as uh, two small pieces. But for us, this will should work fairly well. See, that's kind of that little side there. If need be, you can always select all in here. Remember, this stuff is context sensitive, whichever menu you're in, right? Your quick keys will work to set up vertex edge and face here, but not here if your cursor's over the UV space, the UV editor. Just like control A will select all here, but not there. Those are already all selected so we can see them. Remember, we saw this the other day. If you go to UV, you can pack islands, and that can just repack them if they need to be repacked. In this case, it did a pretty good job with them. If need be, you can always kind of move a few off, right? Sometimes they're almost on top of each other, right? So you have to be a little bit careful with that. You can always kind of, you know, remove these over a little bit if you need a little more space. Uh, if need be, right, you can try different packing methods. Just pack UV, right? And there's options in here so you can give a little bit more of a margin. Right? See how you can kind of give a small little margin to those, so it's got a little bit of space in between them. See, 0 0.01, so it's a small little space. So if you need to, you can always kind of repack and have the options and give it just a little bit of margin, so there's a bit of space between each UV island, right? So remember, you have a couple of different pack island features that have their own little margins, controls. All right. Uh, so just kind of a little bit more about some of the other alternatives. And that's a big part of what I wanted to get you guys to see today on UV unwrapping was that in the unwrap method, you do have smart UV project, cylinder, cube. Um, our column kind of already had reasonably good ones. Not perfect, but reasonably good, good enough for what we want, right? I, said I, I do want to show you the uh, text tools one later on, but that's going to be our next project. So... Um, We'll wait to have a whole new project and we're, we're more experienced with stuff. And it's good to know what you could do with your stock ones. Um, so just kind of want to highlight a few of those features today um, for how UV wrapping will work. All right. And that'll work uh, pretty well for that. And just a great way to repoint out that, you know, we could go assign UV grid to rooms so we could get an idea of how our UV wrapping is going to work, right? Remember, we're always looking for that checkerboard to look pretty nice, right? If it's not looking like a checkerboard, your UVs are probably not perfect, <laughs> right? It probably needs some work. Um, so you want to get them pretty close to checkerboard, and if you do, you're in decent shape. Even if there's some, mi some little bit of stretching, usually that's going to be okay. The texture painting will still paint fairly well as long as the stretching isn't massive, right? Usually low distortion is not detrimental high distortion is. Uh, and the way you tell is the checkerboard, right? The closer it looks to the checkerboard being pretty much identical to this, the better your UVs are, the lower distortion they are, the, the better when you paint, the worse, right? Uh, texturing and particularly 3D texture painting is tolerant of some level of distortion, uh, but not a high level of distortion. That's why we're UV unwrapping, right? You'll see that this UV grid is basically a two-dimensional image so we're actually basically breaking this model up into a bunch of two-dimensional parts, right? That try to be kind of fairly rectangular and flat so that they can go over the texture properly and not have much distortion, right? So that's the whole point of even wrapping is to take your model and kind of create a version of it that's 2D, right? That can go over a 2D picture. Talked about that before, but it's always great to reinforce that. Okay, 
so now that's kind of in good shape there. Uh, let's go to File Open and let's open up our chandelier just so we can kind of uh, do that a little bit. All right. So in this case, uh, probably a good idea for us to go back in, uh, you know, go to UV Editing Workspace. There we go. Uh, go to our red sphere. So you see how this is just a lot of practice of stuff we've been doing today, a couple of new things, but a lot of practice of adding this material, right? So you can go to that red ball down towards the bottom here in Property Editor. Click on that, make sure that material's on there. You can also go to the other ones and make sure that that same material's on those as well, right? So you see how you just quickly go right in there just to all the objects and just make sure that, click on that white ball there, material. Remember, that's all the red ball there. And this is the same material on all of them, so all we have to do is put the UV grid in one of them, basically. So base color, right? Remember, we're on that little red ball down here. So make sure it's assigned to the object. Make sure to go up here and pick it there, right? So you can see it. And then, of course, we click on the yellow dot for base color. That brings this up. We go image texture. We go new, right? It brings this up here, new. Call this UV. Go to the generated type option down here, UV grid. Hit OK. And this is one thing we've actually seen a few times already in our videos and our previous lectures. And I'm going to do a review lecture on this stuff for you guys as well. Right? We just haven't gotten there yet. We just want to get through the, uh, the new lecture. So now we have that on there. Remember, we have these balls up here at the top, kind of almost at the very top right corner of this viewport. There's the one that looks like it's just edges. That's wireframe. There's the one that just looks solid white. That's shaded. And then there's the one that looks a lot like the material ones, where it's a ball but with kind of like a, a, a bit of a checkerboard in it. That's material preview, and you can see our UVs on it. You can see that the spheres are already actually in pretty good shape because default primitive UVs aren't bad, actually. A default primitive that you haven't done anything to, the UVs are usually reasonably well unwrapped on those, right? But once you start modeling, adding edge loops, extru particularly extruding or beveling, the UVs are going to get screwed up there, right? So our spheres, if we go and look at them, are actually going to be in pretty good shape, right? We don't really have to worry about those too much. We can just leave them alone. Um, we're also just going to put a glow pretty much on that whole object anyways, so that'll just be simple material work. Um, so really, we want to UV unwrap some of these other ones a little bit more. Uh, you also see that we could go to our chords, hit 3, Control-A for select all, and you notice how the UVs are already in pretty good shape there also. Maybe, uh, maybe a little bit more scaling to kind of have it a little stretched a little less. Right? But you see how basically kind of those are not too bad, maybe just a little bit long. But here's the thing, you can have island select on and box select all the islands. And then you can kind of scale these down a bit and out a little bit just to kind of have them have a little less stretch. And if you want to, remember, you can always just go to UV pack islands to kind of repack all those islands so they're not on top of each other. Although, like I said, you might want to go to pack islands or pack UV. You might want to go to the pack UV options and maybe give it a little bit of a margin so there's some space in between them, right? Oh, it doesn't need to be 0.3, but like maybe 0 0.02. Yeah, I think 3 kind of gave us a bit better. But a little bit of a margin space in between them is never a bad idea. All right, maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.04. There we go. And that way, each of those can have their own unique texture. They've got a little space. But you see how sometimes they're too square, and sometimes you want them to be a little bit more rectangle to match the proper shape. So once again, we can see that the stuff we did that are primitives that we didn't really modify at all, like our spheres, the UVs are pretty good on. And even the curved stuff we did with the bevel for the cords, the UVs were pretty good there as well. We just maybe needed to do a little bit of scaling so they're not quite as stretched. And maybe kind of a repack so they're not on top of each other. They can stay on top of each other. That would mean that your texturing would be uh, different on each one, though, or uh, the same on each one. That can be a really great trick for um, maximizing texture uh, resolution on the model, right? Because each one gets the same texture, so each one gets more pixels, right? You can see right now, each one of these little guys right here gets just a small slice of it. But if we left them on top, 
So you each one get a bigger slice, right? But that does mean you can't have unique texturing, right? Each one has to be identical because the UVs are on top of each other. That's not right or wrong. You just have to understand the, the benefits and the drawbacks, right? The benefit is each island gets more pixels, so the resolution is higher. The drawback is that the texture has to be identical on all of them because they're on top of each other, so the pixels underneath are going to be the same. It was a very common trick. It's still somewhat common on some things in video games. So we can actually see that a lot of this is in good shape for us. And really the only thing we have to kind of focus on unwrapping properly is going to be this part right here, right? And that's where we can easily come into two for edge mode, double left click, shift double left click, to kind of start to put some seams in, right? Right click, mark seam. This one will be a little trickier around here, so you have to kind of really <laughs> get in there manually with that. Although, if you go to three for face mode, and I double left click on an edge near a face, it'll select a face loop. You can always go back in here, shift left click grab these, it's a little quicker. You can always then hit two for edge to convert to edge mode. Although, keep in mind that if I go back to three for face mode, we can go to select here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, where is it? Um, uh, select boundary loop. Right? And what that will do is it will select just the boundary of that face selection. So if you select all those faces, it might be a little quicker and easier. You can go into select loops, boundary loop, and it will just select the outer edge loop. And then right click. Mark seam. You saw it was just kind of a little easier to get a loop around that. And you do the same thing on the bottom here, right? Three for face. Double left click to select a face loop, right? Remember, when you're selecting a face loop, it should be close to an edge that's kind of uh, parallel to the direction you want to go, right? So see I'm clicking close to that edge. If I did this one, I'd do a face loop that way. And then just shift left click, shift left click, shift left click to kind of go around here. Oop, not there. Just kind of grab all these borders. And you see how we're just kind of grabbing the bottom. Remember, the select menu has select loops, boundary loop. And then we can right click, mark seam. The only thing we're going to probably run into a problem with is this side here. So it might be a good idea to maybe add a couple of seams every few parts. Maybe like this. Uh, that should work right there. Not to be perfect. Right click, mark seam. And let's go to Control A to select all. And then, of course, we go to UV unwrap. You saw it did a pretty good uh, job unwrapping that in a couple of different parts um, with reasonably low distortion. Right, we're not seeing too much distortion here. Um, you might have a slight issue there, so on the inside, you might even just add an extra loop here and here. Right click, mark seam. And maybe select all again, right? Control A to select all. UV, unwrap, unwrap. And you said this can get us a little lower distortion. So if you need to, you could always kind of add a few extra seams in to get the distortion a little lower. But you see, that's going to be fairly good, fairly low distortion. Right? We're not trying to necessarily get all these super perfect for our first models, but it's good enough. But it lets us start to see the basic controls we have for marking seams, for using the unwrap tool, um, certain other projection types. And then, of course, we can overall see that our UVs are in pretty decent shape for this, right? Good enough to do some fairly good texturing, right? So this is really a beginner model trying to make sure to not overwhelm you with too much, <laughs> right? All right. So I think that'll be a great place to stop on that. And technically, we've done all of our even wrapping. <laughs>